drive near Century City. I'm being tailed by a green sedan. Do you know who it is? No, but he's a pro. He must have put an electronic beeper on my car. I can't shake it. Paul, I'm going to lead him to the Century City garage. I'll park on the first level. Let's try something.
Yes, Paul. Well, you were right, Perry. There was a beeper on your car. But now we've got one on his. Stay with me, Paul. I want to know who and why. Will do. Mr. Mason, Nikon has been excited all day knowing you were coming. I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to tell her what she's been waiting to hear. Oh, I'm sorry, but not surprised. She's going to be hurt all over again. These few weeks since she came to us from Vietnam, we have all found Nikon to be the type of person who has learned to accept what she cannot change. Your garden is beautiful. Thank you. I can't decide why it's growing so well. People, I am convinced, grow beautiful through right living, right thinking, self-denial. But gardens, I'm afraid, need fertilizer. Thank you. Where is the ladies' room? Je suis américain. I am an American. I am an American. Well, you certainly sound like an American. My brother says it's okay, I should kiss you. In Los Angeles, everybody kisses everybody. Well, when your brother and I were in college together, he tried to kiss every girl in sight. You didn't. When I was 18 and you came to visit us, I was so madly in love with you and you hardly noticed. Oh, I noticed. The tape you gave me yesterday, it helped my accent, right? Right. And when you find my husband? Nikon, that's why I came to see you. You found Bird. I know it would happen. I never believed he was dead. Nikon, Bird is dead. He was killed in Vietnam, just as you were told. But I... But I was so sure. I mean, when I could find no records, no grave, and someone said that they saw Bert getting on the airplane in Tansunut. He may have lost his memory and gotten hurt. Paul Drake took this picture you gave us. He traced the number on the jeep. He found the unit your husband was with his correspondent. One man remembered him. He said that Bert was killed crossing a minefield. certainly is. And my differences with my opponent on this issue are well known. I see. Uh, but could you explain that a little further? I'd be glad to. As long as there are politicians in this state who contend that the rights of criminals are more pressing than the rights of their victims, well, then concerned private citizens like me are compelled to make a run at them. And uh, see if we can't... Uh, boot these incumbents out on their complacent tails. <laughs> and on that note, gentlemen, I think we'll call it a conference. Oh, well, uh, the bar is open. Thank you, sir. I don't know what happened, Perry. 
Uh, one minute, Nikon's husband was talking to the guy that was trailing you, and the next minute, the conference broke up, and in the rush, he just disappeared. And nobody there ever heard of Bert Porter. But you're sure you saw him? Well, I'm 99% sure. Of course, the man in the photo has got a beard, and the fellow I saw today was clean-shaven, but even so. Uh, if Bert Porter is alive, he's got to have amnesia. Don't believe it. He wouldn't have had me tailed if he didn't know I was looking for him. Oh, I traced the uh, license number of that car that was tailing you. Belongs to a private detective agency. Big. Nearly as good as mine. If you're so good, when are you going to find out what news agency Bert Porter was accredited to? I just got it. That was the hang-up. See, there was no agency. When he was in Vietnam, he was working for Spencer Phillips. Spencer Phillips? The golden-voiced anchorman on the news. Good evening, Americans. Uh, this is Spencer Phillips bringing you the latest news from the four corners of the world. Voice level okay in the booth? Fine, Mr. Phillips. Six minutes to air. Okay. Send in makeup. I'm shining. Phillips? Yeah, Barry Mason. Oh, yeah. Have you got a minute to talk, or would you prefer that I wait till after your program? Well, it's not much more than a minute, I'm afraid. That's about your stringer, Bert Porter, who was supposed to have been killed in Vietnam. What do you mean, supposed? Well, apparently he was seen at Clinton Exeter's press conference today. Why are you interested in Burke Porter? I'm representing his widow. If she is a widow. Well, I'll be a son of a gun. <laughs> Who is she? She's a Vietnamese girl I've known for a long time. She has all the legal documents. And she's here? Looking for her husband. She never believed he was dead. <laughs> Good for her. Because <laughs> he's not dead. Bert Porter was a byline he used in Vietnam. His real name was Royce Landon. Royce Landon. What reason would he have for letting his wife think he was dead? Two minutes near, Mr. Phillips. A very good and a very valid one. Excuse me. husband isn't dead. You found Bert? There is no Bert Porter. His real name is Royce Landon. I don't understand. Amnesia. No. He was pretending he was dead. He was hiding from me. Why? He's married to someone else. Mr. Landon is tied up. He won't be able to see Mr. Mason until 8 this evening. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Exeter. Rose, I want to work. Morning, Dad. I'll call you later. Thanks. Okay, I'll just leave the address. Spencer Phillips tells me I'm not even your father-in-law, not legally. I don't know what you're talking about. When I want you to talk, I'll tell you. Spencer Phillips tells me you married some chippy in Vietnam. That's not true. I said, shut up. He says you married her to get close to a black market scandal, that you, uh, you got your story, then you cut Phillips out of it to land yourself a better job. Then you married my daughter and my position and my money. Now you can talk. A minute's worth before I throw you the hell out of here. Look, you've got to believe me. I don't know anything about this or anything that Spencer Phillips or anybody else says. Spencer Phillips tells me that he's going to break the story on the air. 
that'll destroy Dina. It'll ruin my campaign and you. He wouldn't risk a lawsuit if he weren't sure of his grounds. He's bluffing. He's just trying to get to you. Call him up. Tell him that. Spencer Phillips here. Royce Landon. I hope you're sweating, you louse. It took me a long time, but I'm going to fix you good. Not the way I'm going to fix you. You forget I was on your staff. I know how you operate. I've got a whole filing cabinet on you. Pale you've taken for mentioning the right products and the right people. The dough you've squeezed out of big names with guilty consciences. All those hate groups you financed while you were wrapping yourself in the flag. Oh, let's, uh, let's talk this over sanely, Royce. There's no point in... You call my father-in-law. Tell him you lied. When you've done that, you can call my secretary and make an appointment. You believe me now, don't you? You hurt Dina or not? Versus Legum, 67 California Reporter at page 45. The court held that ownership of real property was established by. I. I'll put it aside for now, Dell. I can't keep my mind on it. Nikon. Can't see Royce Landon until later this evening. <laughs> Play your cards right, sweetheart. I'll take you to dinner tonight. Yes, may I help you? I'm Mrs. Royce Landon. I would like to see Mr. Mason. Oh, I'm sorry. He's busy right now. Excuse me, Mrs. Landon. Mr. Mason, I'm Dina Landon. Now, this can't wait, so please don't try to put me off, because I won't let you. All right, Della. Is it true about Royce? Is it true? I think you'd better see your lawyer. I don't need a lawyer. Now, tell me, is it true? Yes. Your husband married another woman before he met you. And he's still married to her. Could I have a drink? Certainly. Royce and my father don't know that I'm here don't know that I'm even aware. But I overheard Spencer Phillips talking on the phone, and I, uh... Thank you. Look at me, Mr. Mason. I mean... Really, look. I'm no kid, you see. For years I kept house. Looked after my father. Told my friends that I was dedicated to his career. But I was lying. Mainly to myself. The truth is that I stayed alone. Single. Because no one wanted me. There's no need for you to tell me this. I want to tell you this. So that you'll understand why... Anyway, when Royce came along, it was as if fate had finally relented. 
given me a chance at the kind of happiness that most people just take for granted. He, he could have, he could have had someone younger and prettier. He married me. It's while he was still married to Nikon. Will you just listen? Will you let me finish, please? Now, you see, there's my father. He's convinced that winning this election will give reason to his whole life. Now, if this should get out, it would be the end for him, too. Now, I just can't let that happen. Yes, well, Neat Khan has been hurt, too. Fifty thousand dollars. What? I'll make out a check right now. Fifty thousand dollars to this girl. In exchange for what? She goes back to Vietnam. She forgets all about ever being married to Royce. Oh, uh, you arrange uh, for the annulment, right? I can understand how you feel. But this is something that would have to be worked out between Nick Khan and Royce. Not you and me. Mr. Mason, please. Royce and my father don't know it. But I'm going to have a baby. I don't know that I can do anything. But I'll get back to you as soon as I've spoken to Royce. And then to Nikon. Your husband. Bert Porter was your husband. He doesn't exist. Not anymore. You're going to sign the paper. You're going to say that we were never married. We knew one another, lived together for a weekend, and that's all. I have my life. I have a family. I have respect for myself and for my family. I'm not going to lie for you to save you pain. Yes, you oh! are. Yes, you are. Then you're going to get the hell out of my life. You're going to go home, and I never want to hear from you again. I'll kill you. I'll swear I'll kill you. Drop it. Drop it. Mmm. That hot dog was an inch deep in onions. Will it bother you? I don't know. What have you got in mind? It's 386. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Royce Landon's going to object to you taking notes, but I'll insist on it. Well, I thought you invited me along for myself, not my shorthand. Secretaries who eat onions have to settle for shorthand.
Oops. Still hot. Maybe he's planning to come back. Royce found Nikon. Let's go. Nikon. I saw my husband. He wanted me to sign a paper to say that we were never married. Did you sign it? No. He said he left for his office. He said that uh, you will meet him there. You will talk sense. Stay with her. Where are you going? To find him. My pruning knife. I, I must have left it around the garden somewhere. What about the knife? It was there in the garden. When I tried to get away, uh, my fingers touched it. I picked it up, I don't know why. Then what? He twisted my arm and I... And I dropped the knife. What did he do with it? He took it with him. I suppose he was afraid that I... Miss, it's Mrs. Royce Landon, Lieutenant. Okay. Are these your shoes, Miss? Mrs. Landon, excuse me. I don't understand. Are these the shoes you were wearing earlier this evening? Yes. Mrs. Royce Landon, I'm arresting you for the murder of your, um, your husband. What? Nikon. You're going to have to go with him now. Don't worry. I'll be in to see you the first thing in the morning. Until then, I don't want you to say anything to anyone. Do you understand? No, I don't. If I cannot talk to them, how can I make them believe I'm telling the truth? Now please, just do what I say. Come on. Lieutenant, I don't want you to discuss this with her. Relax, Counselor. I will read her her rights. Come on. I think it's possible. No, she says she didn't. Nikon doesn't know how to lie. Then if she is telling the truth about everything... It means that Royce did take the knife with him. And did go to his office to keep his appointment with me. I want to get in touch with Paul. See if he can meet us at Landon's office. Locked. 
Well, I guess that takes care of that. It's probably just stuck. You try it, Paul. Now, wait a minute, Perry. If you're suggesting breaking it, I'm Harry... just suggesting you try the door. I'm representing Landon's widow. She has a legal right to enter her husband's office. Story hits the press and television. This guy may as well concede. Della, Paul. Do you notice anything different about this room? Uh, I don't know. Barry. Looks like somebody's been trying to pry their way into this file cabinet. Still are? Yep. Della, when we were here earlier, was that rug on the floor? No. I almost slipped when I came through the door. Why wasn't it here? Where was it? How did it get back? Hmm. Unfortunately, rugs can't talk. This one might. First thing in the morning, I'll try to get a court order. So we can take everything we need out of here. Want to take a look at that? The right-hand slide is a peat moss specimen we took from the rug. The left slide is a comparison specimen we took in the temple garden. And they look the same to me. But can we prove that the specimen from the office came from the temple garden and nowhere else? I don't know. We're working on it. I've got it open. Did you get anything else in the rug? Oh, of course. We got wool and Dacron fibers, human hair samples. Oh, and a positive pattern in the Oak test. Have you run mixed agglutination? Doing it now. Here are the dead man's clothes. Uh, we'll see if we can match the cloth fibers. Oh, check this file and the others in the drawer. Apparently, there are a lot of people who might have wanted to break into that cabinet. We had it. To shoot a few clay pigeons. Not bad for a weekend shooter. That's not good either. Since you insisted, this is the only time I can see you. Hold. This is, uh, this is my game, Mason, not fencing. So, uh, lay it out for me. What do you want? Did you like your son-in-law? No. Are there a lot of people who shared your opinion of him? Oh, yes. Will you testify to that? I'll testify for the DA. I imagine that will get you good press. Pull. Getting good press is not my concern. Getting a just verdict is. All I'll do on the stand is tell the truth. What is the truth as you see it? That Royce denied he was married to that... that woman. That he forced Spencer Phillips to back down on his lie on the phone in my presence. That he went to see the girl to make her admit that it wasn't the truth. And that was the last time I saw him. Was it the last time? I'm not accustomed to having my word questioned. Paul. Mr. Exeter, the night Royce was killed, I went to his office to meet him. I saw the lights go out, found the door unlocked, but no one was there. But when I returned later, I found the door locked. How do you explain that? Why should I have to explain that or anything else? Well, why wouldn't you want to? You're shot. Neither of us talks to the press. No, dear. If you push, I'll go for a gag order. There's been too much publicity on this already. If it ever gets to a jury... Don't you worry. It'll get to a jury. Well, unless try her in court, not in the media. Perry, this is news. You can't keep it from the public. Now, I've got a pretty good case. If you don't want to talk, that's your prerogative. Uh, Mr. Berger, are you going to the grand jury with this one? 
No, there will be a preliminary hearing to have her bound over for trial in Superior Court. Is it uh, murder one? No. From the bruises on her face, we're satisfied that the girl was telling the truth, that her husband was beating her. Is that why she killed him? Well, she hasn't admitted uh, that. Mr. Perry Mason, uh, could we have a word for my evening? No, I can make no uh, Just one question time. for Perry Mason, who is defending the Vietnamese girl accused of murdering her bigamous Mr. husband. Mr. Phillips, I will make no statements. Uh, well, are you aware, sir, that uh, three years ago in Saigon, your client did kill a man? Yes, and are you aware that man was a Viet Cong terrorist who attempted to toss a bomb into the classroom where she was teaching? Well, it just shows exactly... It shows you're a damn fool. It shows the kind of perverted half-truths you deal in. Put that on the Spencer Phillips news. Kill it. Who was Bert Porter? Well, Royce Landon had made a few generals unhappy, so I created Bert Porter. I had Royce accredited under that name. When did, uh, when did you become aware of Bert Porter's marriage? Less than a week ago. I think it was on a, uh, on a Wednesday. Mr. Perry Mason came to see me, told me he was representing the girl that Bert Porter had married, that she refused to believe Bert Porter was dead. <laughs> I had, uh, quote, killed him off when we were through with him. <laughs> what did you tell Mr. Mason? The same thing I told you, that uh, Bert Porter and Royce Landon were the same man. Did you use this information in any way? Yes. I called Clinton Exeter and let him know that his son-in-law was a bigamist. My son-in-law denied it. I was anxious to believe it. After all, Spencer Phillips is not exactly my idea of a bulwark of truth. So what did you do? I put it to Royce. I told him to prove that he was on the level. And did he prove it? Well, he called Spencer Phillips. He told him he'd ruin him if he broadcast the story. Then he promised to go to the temple for a showdown with the, the Vietnamese girl. Thank you. Your witness, Mr. Mason. This witness is under subpoena to testify later for the defense. I intend to recall him, and we've had the opportunity to present evidence. Very well, Mr. Mason. The witness may stand down. Your Honor, the people call Lieutenant Arthur Tragg. Yes, sir. That's the knife with the fingerprints of the accused on it and her slippers, which match the moulage is taken near the body. Now, Lieutenant... After completing your investigation of the murder scene, what did you do? Well, with a uniformed officer, we went into the temple, to the room of the accused. We placed her under arrest, and I advised her of her right to remain silent. Her attorney, Mr. Mason, was present at the time, and he instructed her to make no statement. And did she, in fact, remain silent? No, sir. She insisted on talking all the way to the station. As a matter of fact, at headquarters, she continued to talk despite our reminders to remain silent. What did she tell you? Objection, Your Honor. I ask that the court refuse to allow the introduction of any statements given by my client, despite my advice to remain silent. Your Honor, the police are... tactics in obtaining this information were absolutely outrageous. Your Honor, there were no grounds for such objection. There was no coercion. The statement made by the witness was given voluntarily. The letter of the law has been complied with in every respect. Not the letter, and certainly not the intent. Your Honor, we have here the sorry spectacle of a young woman from a foreign country, totally ignorant of our laws and our procedures, yet dependent upon them for protection, being deliberately misled, subverted into disregarding her lawyer's advice, and induced to make damaging, self-incriminating statements. Objection overruled. Proceed, Mr. Berger. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Lieutenant. What did the accused tell you? Well, she said that Royce Landon had come to the temple and insisted that she deny that they were ever married. As a matter of fact, he wanted her to sign a statement to that effect. And when she refused, he struck her repeatedly with his open hand and his fist. Were there marks on the face or body to indicate such physical violence? Yes, sir. Her face was swollen, and there were bruises in several places. Thank you. Your witness. Mr. Mason? Lieutenant Tragg, do you know of any facts inconsistent with what the accused told you? No, sir. So to your knowledge, in every instance, 
She told you the truth? Yes, sir. Lieutenant, did you ever ask the accused if she had killed her husband? Yes. What did she tell you? She denied it. She denied it. Thank you, Lieutenant. Lieutenant, since defense counsel is so interested in whether or not you believe the accused, let me ask you one question. After investigating all the facts, do you believe that the accused was telling the truth when she denied killing her husband? No, sir, I did not. Thank you. Witness is excused. Your Honor, we have presented a preponderance of evidence which shows that the accused should be bound over for trial in Superior Court on the charge of murder in the second degree. Before you rule, Your Honor, the defense wishes to present evidence. Very well, Mr. Mason, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. The defense calls Dr. Hans Glover. I was chief of laboratory services at the Pritzker Institute. I've taught criminalistics at the following universities. Your Honor, the people will stipulate as to Dr. Glover's qualifications as an expert witness. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Berger. Dr. Glover, would you please tell the court the results of your detailed examination of this rug taken from the decedent, Royce Landon's office? This is a microphotograph of the peat moss specimen we recovered from the rug. But here, you can see something quite different here and here. These are spores of a rare type of fern, the Wallachi, which is native to Southeast Asia. Doctor, are there any Wallachi plants in this city? Yes, in the Garden of the Buddhist Temple where our comparison specimen was taken. This is a photograph of the sample recovered from the right shoe of the decedent. You can see the same spores here and here. In your opinion, would these spores indicate that someone left the garden carrying the residue from the flower bed on his shoes and then walked on the rug? Yes. And Doctor, I again call your attention to the rug. Will you please tell the court the additional results of your examination? Yes. We found and identified a proliferation of faint blood stains about this area. An attempt had been made to remove them with a chemical solvent. Were you able to determine the blood type? Yes, by mixed agglutination tests. They all proved to be type A negative, the same as that of the decedent. I see. Did you find anything else? Of course. Wool and Dacron fibers were widely distributed over the rug. These matched the fibers taken from the clothing of the decedent. Acrylic fibers from the rug itself were also present on the clothing of the deceased. Doctor, did you find any samples of human hair on the rug? Certainly. They match perfectly with samples taken from the head of the deceased. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Glover, as an expert, what conclusion did you draw from your tests? We ran experimental procedures to check our conclusions. In my opinion, it appears the only explanation for the blood stains, the spores, the peat moss, the clothing fibers, and the hair samples is that Royce Landon's body was rolled up in the rug. Was this rug in the decedent's office when you went there at 7.30? I don't know. I, I, I didn't look in there. But you've already testified that you knew your daughter was going there for a face-to-face -face confrontation with Royce Landon. Why didn't you bother to look? I, 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 I don't know. Mr. Exeter, we've already heard testimony that this rug was missing from the office at 8 o'clock. Yet at 9.30 that night, when the door was unlocked, the rug was back on the floor. Now, since Royce Landon was dead, and since you had the only other key, is it not a fact that you moved that rug, Mr. Exeter? Yes. You put the body in the rug in the office, is that correct? Yes. You carried it down to your car. You dumped the body and the murder weapon in the temple garden. Then you returned this rug to the office. Is that not a fact? Well, I, I, I couldn't... There was no other way. Well, no, Mr. Exeter, there wasn't. Not if Landon's Vietnamese wife was to be blamed for his murder. It had to appear that he was killed in the temple garden. And not, as was true, stabbed to death in his own office. Well, she created the situation! Coming here, following up our lives, ruining my election campaign, destroying my daughter's happiness. But I didn't kill Royce. Before you proceed further, Mr. Mason, I want to caution the witness on the danger of self-incrimination. That won't be necessary, Your Honor. I'm through with this witness. And at this time, since we have presented conclusive evidence that Royce Landon was killed in his office, not in the Temple Garden, and since that makes it impossible for the accused to have committed the murder, I move that all charges against her be dismissed and that she be released from custody. Your Honor, 
The people agree with the motion. The motion is granted. All charges against Econ Landon are dismissed. And she is free to go. I want to see Exeter in my office. It's all over, Nikon. No, it isn't. Now, what do you want? We gave the court conclusive proof of her innocence. She's free to go. But we still don't know who murdered Royce Landon. If the courts don't want to decide, we feel America still has a right to know. Uh, tell me, Mrs. Landon, or should I say, Miss Exeter, was it you or your father who knocked off your bigamous husband? Please. Now, we know you went there looking for him. So what happened when you came face to face with my philandering ex like me? Yes. Don't you have any decency uh, Did you all? stick your son-in-law, Exeter, or did she do it so you had to cover for no, him? No, I didn't kill him. I never saw him. I, I was never in the office that night. Oh, why not? Because I saw you there, so I got in my car and left. Wait a minute. You were there in that office? Please, we're filming, Mr. Berger. I better inform you of your rights. I don't want to hear any of that left-wing drivel. I can take care of myself. Were you in that office? Of course not. She's lying to protect herself. What possible reason could I have for going there? I can think of a reason, Mr. Phillips. That material you wanted out of Landon's files. But this is your show. Why don't you tell your public how he returned unexpectedly and caught you trying to break into his file cabinet? Royce told him he'd use those files against him. He told him to come. Did he threaten to have you arrested, ruin you, ruin your TV career, Mr. Phillips? We're waiting, Mr. Phillips. I went there to talk to him, that's all. And he walked in when you were going through his filing cabinet. While I was in the office there... He... And he walked in, Mr. Phillips. Yes, he, he, he walked in with that garden knife. You thought he'd use it? Well, he would have. He was, he was crazy mad. I had to get the knife away from him. And you did, and you killed him with it. In self-defense. Self-defense, I swear. I swear that's what it was. Just signed off. In Los Angeles, everybody kisses everybody. 